Hey everybody, my name is Danny Dumas, and this is the Earn Your Title Podcast. And today, I'm going to be a hypocrite. In my title, it's the Earn Your Title Podcast, helping men become better husbands, fathers, and leaders. And that last part is the part I'm going to talk about, because I don't think everybody needs to be a leader. Now, I think you should be the leader of your family. I'm using in the context, husband, father, leader, it's you're a husband, you're a father, and therefore in your family, you're a leader, but we have all kinds of roles. You have employee, you have citizen, you have, you know, church member, you have organizational member, you have all these things. And there is a culture in the United States, at least, where if you don't want to lead, something is wrong with you. And I don't think that's true. You know, we, I have some, uh, I have some family members in the military and from what they were telling me, it's pretty much you're going up, you're moving up the chain or you're leaving. There's no like, Oh yeah, yeah, you're cool. You, You found a good spot. Just stay here for the next 25 years. For the most part, if you're not willing to progress and move up to the chain, up the chain to higher, higher leadership positions, they want you to leave. I just don't think that's true. Um, you know, it literally can't be true, right? There's no way that all of us can be leaders because then none of us would be leaders. So, you know, you know, why is that? Well, I, I think that the, the qualities that make somebody a leader, make them a good employee, make them, you know, maybe put a little bit more effort. And so when you have, in, at least in the business world, you see managers that are trying to get people to be more productive, to take responsibility for things. And they see that as leadership. But I think that those can exist in followership as well. That would make you a really good follower. And it's really important that, you know, that if you feel this pressure, like, man, I feel like I got to take the next step that I don't think you have to. I think there's a place for people who become really good at their job. And and that job is not in the leadership position. Uh, The reason I'm bringing this up is I'm about to turn down the next level up in, in my, uh, in my career, there's basically four things you can do. You become a driver of a, of a fire engine and, and that's, that's an awesome job, but you don't really go anywhere from there. There's no like senior driver. You're the driver. Awesome. Then you can learn, uh, then you can go to the next leadership position, which would be Lieutenant, then captain, which is where I'm currently at. And then battalion chief, the battalion chief is the highest ranking position in where you're still working as a firefighter on a daily basis where you don't go to the administration. So I have tested for battalion chief in a couple of weeks. The next battalion chief will be retiring. That is my position and I am turning it down. And I've had some people ask me, well, why is that? The reason being is I want to become the best captain that I can be. And I don't think I am yet. I think I have room to grow. I think I have room to um, to advance my skills. I think I can make a difference where I'm at. And I know with the amount of time that I still have to work, that that next job, the battalion chief job, I'll be, I would be doing it for maybe 15 years. And I want to be excited about being a battalion chief. I want to be motivated and focused. And I don't know if I can stay motivated, focused for 15 years in that job. There's some personal reasons. There's a, you know, The location of where I physically have to work is not where I want to work. I'm in a location right now that I love. When I go to work on most days, I really, really love my job. I love the calls that I get to go on, the people that I work with. I I really like it. And I was sitting, it was a Sunday, and Sundays at at work are pretty chill. We don't train or anything on Sunday. So we're hanging out, getting ready to have breakfast, and our, our chaplain shows up. And he was a former firefighter. He was a former deputy chief. And we're talking. He asked me about the job. I said, yeah, I'm turning it down. He said, you know, I wish I would have turned down my last job. He's like, I, I took it because that's what you do, right? You just move to the next one. He's like, and I, I wasn't happy the last couple of years. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I needed, I really needed to hear that. You know, there, there truly is something to be said about staying where you're at and getting good at where you're at. Now I am a leader. I am, I'm, you know, I have people call me with their problems all day long and I try to solve them. So a couple things to take away, maybe the anxiety or the worry that you're not living up to your potential because you're not leading. One, leadership is not the most important part of the job. It's just a member of the team. And, and, and I try to enforce this and encourage this at work. I'm just the one making the decisions and having some responsibility. And that's just 
a segment of the re- of the job. It doesn't make me better. It doesn't make me worse. It doesn't make me special. It is saying that there's somebody on this scene that is going to make the decisions and going to think through the problem. And then there's some people that are going to execute my decisions and try to solve the problem. That's all it is. It doesn't mean you're not an important person. It probably means you're more important if you're the person solving the problem, right? I could lead all day long. I can make some great tactical decisions at a house fire. If I'm talking on the radio and nobody's listening and nobody's doing what I'm asking them to do, then nothing is happening. Then the house burns down and people, bad things happen. So my job is not the most important. It's vital. And, and, you know, in the fire service, there's some fires we show up to. It's our bread and butter fire. You know, if you have a kitchen fire and your cabinets are on fire, I don't need to say much. I'll, I get on the scene and I tell them that I'm in command and then they pull the line off the truck. They go on, they put a hundred gallons of water. The fire goes out. I call the inspector. They take the hose out. They drain it. They put it back on the truck. Very minimal effort. We show up and three in the morning and there's two people hanging out a window there's someone came out the front door, they're burned and there's a gas leak and there's uh, a gas fire in the back of the house. I need to be there. My job becomes more important. I need to make some good critical decisions, but I still have to have followers and I have to have guys that I don't have to micromanage that. If that's, if, if you have no desire to be that become the best, you know, I had a, I had a meeting with my guys and I told them I need two kinds of people. I need rock stars, Right. I need uh, these guys that are just solid as a rock that know their job and are going to be very good at it, right? These are just rocks. They're solid rocks. And if that's you, awesome. Become the best at your job. And that doesn't mean you need to be a leader. That's just a position that, that, that you don't want that you, cause you like doing what you do. Uh, the guy that currently drives for, for me every day, he's a rock star. He's good at his job. He knows the streets. He knows how to pump. He knows all these things. He doesn't have a desire to go to the next ship or the next um, position. That is totally 100% okay. But you have to become a rock star. You have to become good at that. It can't, you know, sometimes I think people don't take leadership positions because they're lazy because maybe they would be really good at it, but they just don't want the extra work and responsibility. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about becoming great at your job. So you have rock stars. Those people are solid as a rock. Then you have superstars, you know, they are launching into the stratosphere of leadership. They are superstars. They are moving. They're, they're growing and I'm going to cultivate that. I've got some younger guys that are going to be superstars, right? They're, they're moving. And so I need to cultivate their leadership ability. I need to put them in positions where they can, can kind of figure this out. And the point of this is that you can be either one, either or and be successful. You don't need to take the position of leadership just because that's just the next thing there. It's okay to be happy where you're at. I'm not taking the next battalion chief job because I'm happy. I'm happy and I have a desire to do well. Now, will I in the future? Yes. You know, give me another seven, eight years when I've got two or three more years left or maybe five more years left. I will take that job. I'll be happy. I'll be excited about it. I'll have accomplished the goals that I currently have at the job I'm at. But just because there's more doesn't mean you have to take it. You know, I don't know. There's some, you know, management principle and I don't know what it is because someone else told me and they didn't know what it was called. But basically that if you promote um, enough times, you promote to the level of your incompetence, (laughs) which means if you continually take promotions, you continually to move to the next level of leadership, you will get into a position where you are not qualified, where you are just being set up and you are going to fail because you're not good enough yet if you, if you take enough positions. And I think we can all look back and say, yeah, uh, I know a guy. <laughs> I work for that guy, right? You know, he just took a position because that was the next thing up and he's been here longer than me and now this guy's completely incompetent. Now, maybe that's you. There's two options. One, it's okay to go back. It's okay to go back and say, you know what? I don't want to be a leader or there are things you can do to improve your leadership. Now your who you are as a person is kind of set. I think you can work on your personality, but that takes, you know, that's like years. That's therapy and coaches. There's some technique, you know, you can become a better communicator. You can become more organized have a better planning system. And you can do some of the things that, that, 
good leaders do. But if your personality is just, you know, if you're a micromanager by personality, you're probably not going to be a great leader, or at least not, a, I mean, you might be effective, but you're not going to be great. And so that might be a time, you know, I don't, maybe I just shouldn't be in charge of people. It is okay. I'm giving you permission to say, no, I don't need to go to the next spot. I don't need to become the next, you know, leader. Some people just want to follow and it's okay because following is not a lesser. It's just a different it's a different job. It's a different role. It's more of a doer role. And that is awesome. As a leader, I want a bunch of doers. I truly do. And I want to work for somebody who's a great leader and has even a bigger picture than me. I want to work for a great leader. And when it comes that time for me to be that guy, I want to be great. And I think you have to work your way through that. And so I just wanted to encourage you because we know we get this, there's a push in the United States. You know, you can go in the, the self-help book and it is filled with leadership. We were teaching leadership in high school. We're teaching leadership in college. Everyone leader, leader, leader. There's only one leader in an organization, right? There's only one leader in a group. Therefore, not everybody can statistically be a leader. And it's okay if it's not you. It's totally okay. You're going to be all right. If you would like some help figuring it out whether you should be a leader or not, I want, I want, to, I want to talk. I want to communicate with you. I want to help. I want to mentor you. And I want to hear from you. I want you to mentor me. I want you to talk with me. So reach out. My name is, uh, or my email is danny at dannydumas.com. I would love to get in touch with you. I'd love to uh, see where I can help. I'm excited to see what you're going to do, whether you're uh, going to take the promotion or not. And I'll let you know how it goes with my promotion, not taking it. Um, as far as I know, I'm the first person in my organization that has turned down a promotion. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm happy where I'm at. And so hopefully you're happy as well. And as usual, my name is Danny Dumas, and this is the Earn Your Title Podcast, and I will talk to you later. Bye.